one. Yo, 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 what's up, everybody? Thank you for tuning in to yet again another fantastic indie creator interview with your Capes Crusader Cody. And we are keeping it geekly with our returning guest, John Westhoff. We're here to break down Drumsticks of Doom, issue one and two. And before we get this pit started, give us a little bit of a recap of who you are, John. How have you been since you last been on? Yeah, it's what, been six or seven months since we were last on? <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, my name's John Westhoff. I am the publisher, writer, letterer for Part Time Comics. Uh, my independent publishing house that I started about two years ago. I have about 12 years of publishing experience with a previous company, Kingbone Press, which we put out about two dozen or so awesome books, but uh, decided to kind of branch out on my own and, and started part-time comics a couple years ago. So what books have you worked on leading up to Drumsticks of Doom? I know like I, I know in the time that we've just known each other in those couple of months, you've already dropped what like three or four books? Like you are just keeping at it, man. Yeah, we, we this uh, actually Drumsticks of Doom 2 will be six books in 12 months, um, including one uh, five print releases and one digital only. Now, two of those were anthology, so I, I didn't do all the work in them. Uh, so I do want to give credit there. We'll talk about that later. But um, yeah, so six books in the last 12 months, uh, nine books total in the first uh, two years, less than two years we, we've been uh, publishing. Now, some of that was a lot of work beforehand. Some of these projects have been in the works for, for a while and are finally coming out. That's, uh, you know, kind of how comics go. But yeah, we, I've been busy. Prior to that, um, I kind of just started publishing. I, I, I met an amazing friend. He, he's my friend to this day, Bob Gore Ornelas. We, uh, he had a, just a name for his self-published books. We kind of got together said let's start you know inviting other people and, and and again for about a decade we did that uh we did a ton of anthologies including a music-based anthology called bandology um and we liked to bring people in in that way and to tell short stories and, and and see people get published published through us for the first time see their work in print oh gosh i, I probably worked on a dozen anthologies and then had some independent series i did a a four issue series called the world's strongest mailman which was about a a retired strength athlete who becomes a mailman but uh hijinks ensue uh, i love a, that concept <laughs> already dude <laughs> as a lot of uh, his uh his uh, adversaries kind of follow him to the town of strongville so that was kind of like an all-ages web comic then i did a long-running series both were with artist brian bowles another one called hellbillies which was similar to the themes of drum six of doom it's it, it's kind of the behind the scenes of uh these uh, hillbilly monster hunters who keep hell from coming to earth uh we did the, about 15 issues of that and that was my longest running series uh with king bone press that is so awesome i i love just kind of deep diving and just hearing about what you worked on leading up to this and it's really interesting to hear that you were involved with that music anthology because that almost goes somewhat hand in hand with drumsticks of doom um with it kind of being like a comic you know oriented around music can you give us a little bit of what was some of your inspiration uh, and the creative process when creating this comic. Yeah, I mean, Banthology was a big part of it. I, I, through my co-editor on that book, her name is Wendy Freeman, a fellow Chicagoan. Um, you know, she and I were talking, chatting on the internet or, or, or at a C2E2 or something and, and just kind of realized she was in a band. I was in a band for a long time. We both were into kind of <laughs> comics. And then we were like, wait a minute, this guy is too. And, and Bob Gar is too. And, and we were like, oh my God, we've all been in bands. Let's tell some music stories. We all love musical comics like i loved uh you know scott pilgrim and you know a bunch of us are huge fans of like love and rockets which had you know music in it as well uh um so we we, we set out to make an anthology and, and not really um didn't really over curate it just said hey the music theme has to be uh has to be uh, uh has to be music theme and that was where i met dan doherty who is the artist on drum six of doom he wendy recruited him and he did this amazing story about, it was really about himself. He does a, like a self-titled um, uh, web strip called Beardo. And it's basically himself and his, <laughs> his daily comical stories. And he told a story about playing at the Metro in Chicago and kind of getting that feeling of playing before a big crowd. And, and, and it awakens this beast in you. And the, the, title of the title of the book was Beast in Me. And I just reading that and seeing Dan's art and meeting him, he's, a, he's an amazing guy. He, we've been friends ever since. I always kind of just had this in my mind, like it really, he, he was the inspiration for the story. And then I kind of had this story about my own kind of life in, in being in a band and re realizing you're not probably going to have that as a career and not really do that full time. And then how do you express yourself musically? And, and I sat on it for a long time and it wasn't until, um, 
I kind of got the seed of the story that, you know, I, I'm not Jaime Hernandez, so I don't, didn't think anybody was going to read my really boring story about somebody going through the motions of being in a band and not really making it, um, you know, real slice of life. So I said, <laughs> all right, we got to add some monsters. We got to add some. And then I was like, oh, wait a minute. How would that world come to be? Well, of course, Black Sabbath would become the most popular band in the world, and that would bring out monsters and all these kind of uh, uh, things that your you know aunts and uncles told you don't listen to heavy metal because you know uh, you, you'll you'll turn to Satan. So all these things came to life in a sense. And once I had that, I finally approached Dan and said, "Okay, I finally have the seeds of the story. I was really inspired by your story." You know, I told him, and and that was really how how Drumsticks of Doom started probably seven years ago took me about five years to get up the courage to actually write it down and, and approach Dan. And thankfully he had some time <laughs> in his schedule and, and, and we were off and running. We tried to pitch it to a bunch of companies for, for about a year or so. Didn't Nobody picked it up. So we're, we're back on Kickstarter to kind of get it going ourselves. That's a, it's, a, it's like one of the saddest moments when you have to make that, like that choice, right? Like I can't do this all the time, 24 seven play shows. I, I have to like stop doing this. I have to get a job or I have to like, but, you know, the, when you slowly make that transition from doing it all the time and going out on stage to not doing that, it's, it's, it's a rough transition. I've been there before. I love being on stage. It's so addicting. And when you take that away, like it is hard to fill that void, I feel. Yeah. And I never really got the, um, you know, never really got the big shot. We played a couple of bigger shows and I felt like I was in some decent bands, never did like a tour, you know, never did the, the in the back of a van thing. Yeah. Those things you want to kind of check box. And, and again, as I got towards 30 and started, you know, having a you know kids and yeah again you just kind of realize it and then you talk to other people like yourself and and, and who have had those kind of you know 15 minutes of fame or whatever and you're kind of just uh, that that's always something uh when music is is really part of you and how you express yourself creatively it, it is a transition now i don't feel like sour grapes about it i'm not like oh damn kids damn family you know yeah. so then that was kind of <laughs> it, it, it's kind of a more hopeful story because again that was where i started saying well my creative outlet was music Maybe maybe I'll write some comics, and that was how Bob Gar and I hooked up and started making comics. It was I was looking for something creative. I like to jam with people like that, and, mm -hmm. and comics became that for me. So, so I'm trying to kind of blend that into the story too. So, you know, secretly. That's why I made the main character a woman, so people won't know it's you know it's a, it's it's a farce for my own you know emo feelings about. Uh, never really getting that shot at music, you know? <laughs> and, the, and the thing is, once you hit 30, you're past the warranty. You can't sleep on the, uh, the back of a van. Then your back's going to go out doing that. Like, my back's sure. hurting just thinking about that. Oh, so God, uh, I went, let's. I went camping with my son last week and slept, uh, forgot my pad. And I'm, oh. I'm 41 now. And it, I'm like, <laughs> a week later, I'm like, oh. <laughs> that was such a mistake. <laughs> Give us a, a little bit of how this uh, partnership between you and the artist looks like. You know, when, when you are writing this out and scripting it out, um, how does that look like when it goes from you to the artist? Well, Dan, uh, you know, tongue in cheek, uh, the name of the company is part-time comics. Cause when I came back, I was kind of saying, all right, I need to kind of set limits on myself, not do as much, you know, this is kind of, you know, I, I have a great, you know, full-time gig, um, you know, working. So, but Dan is a full-time artist, you know, mm -hmm. this, this is what he does for a living. So, but as far as like the writing, uh, I, you know, I give him full script. Um, that's how, you know, we kind of talked about it. He seems to like it that way. He, he gives input, you know, what will work, what will not. He of course has free reign to change anything, add anything he wants. Uh, a lot of the story was really started with a very short pitch. It was about 10 pages. We picked a few, you know, choice pages to kind of show off to, to, um, publishers thinking we would get, you know, maybe a publishing deal. So from that first script, you know, I told him the ideas I had for a longer story. It's about nine issues, you know, about three arcs. And he's given some input into that. But really, it's it's the process is a lot of Dan, you know, turns in pages. And we're we really kind of update the story as we go. Uh, a lot of what he's drawn is, is given me, you know, excitement. And oh, that mm -hmm. character needs to have a bigger part because he's so cool. And all oh, that seems amazing. And Dan says, well, you know, I know you like to you know, talk about your sad feelings, but you know, they need to punch each other a little bit more in this scene. So I'm like, all right, Dan, let them punch each other a couple more times. You know, we've, we, we have a, a good working relationship. Again, it, he does work from full script, but he has, you know, carte blanche to, um, you know, change or, or, or add panels or do whatever he needs to, to make the story work. Oh, absolutely. We have Dan Price over on YouTube stopping in to say, hey there, Cody, hope you're all having a good day. Dan, welcome to the stream. I hope you're having a fantastic uh, Wednesday as well. So before we dive into the Kickstarter for issue two, give us a little bit of a breakdown of issue one. What type of a uh, concept are we looking at? You know, what's going to lead us into the, the the campaign that you guys are currently running right now? 
So issue one is really, you know, obviously as issue one should go, right? It's an introduction to the characters in the universe. So we see a little bit about Lana, who is our main character. You know, she's always late. She's perpetually late for practice. She's uh, <laughs> a, a, a young college student. Uh, again, not really knowing exactly what she wants to do musically. She plays multiple instruments, but she kind of still hangs out in her ex-boyfriend's band because they don't have a bass player. Uh, but on the side, she wants to kind of play her own music, which by our standards would be called, you know, indie music. Um, but particularly in this world, uh, pop music, you know, uh, music you hear on the radio is is not the popular music. Heavy mm -hmm. metal is. Uh, as I kind of uh, stated in, the, in the, you know, the tagline again, Black Sabbath, not the Beatles, became the most popular band in the world and thus the universe was changed forever. So Lana's in the middle of that. She wants to play. Uh, she doesn't want to play the popular music of heavy metal. She wants to play her own music, but she, she struggles with that. She's not mm -hmm. confident. Um, she knows she has the skill, but she's not really playing out in front of people. So her and her, the drummer of her, of her, her band, her main band, plays guitar. She gets on drums. She plays some songs. And of course, uh, she comes across a magical pair of drumsticks. It attracts some nefarious characters and we're kind of off and running in the world. And why did she get the drumsticks and why do they interact with her and not other people? Uh, and that's kind of the premise of the first issue. Hey, man, I think uh, after that, this would be a perfect time. Let's go ahead and segue into the Kickstarter for issue number two and see what we're here to campaign for. So, yeah, so we got issue two again. Uh, this is kind of planned out in three arcs. This is the middle of the first arc. And uh, yeah, we've got Lana. Again, you see her there with these uh, in this beautiful black and white art from Dan Doherty with her sticks that obviously most drumsticks don't shoot lightning bolts out of them. So <laughs> uh, what's that all about? You got to read and find out. But yeah, she's uh, she, in this issue. She and Jimmy, the aforementioned bandmate who uh, helps her in her solo project. He's uh, he, she and he are off to the plant where the sticks were made. Uh, as you saw some glim glimpses of in the first pages of the first issue and they, they want to figure out if they can find anything about these sticks where they came from and of course you know we got to have some action in there so you know we got some pages down in the in the uh, in the Kickstarter you can look at uh, you see that obviously they come across a spooky cult that works there at the plant and why are they there and how does that tie into these drumsticks again you'll have to read to find out <laughs> so when i read that first issue uh those drumsticks uh i i read that concept was such an awesome idea uh i was kind of picking up pick of destiny vibes like did you know was that like any sort of influence or what inspired you guys to have these magical properties on on these drumsticks you know i don't think i thought of that intentionally but definitely after the fact um and there are some points in the book where we definitely pay homage to the the late great Ronnie James Dio, which you know also happens in Pick of Destiny. Um, I think that's just kind of the um, the mythos of heavy metal. We all mm -hmm. uh, think about the fantasy elements. For me, it was just like one I, I don't know one day goofing around or something. Just I, I'm not really a fan of huge fan of fantasy and magic. That's not my go to uh, genre. But when I you know you look at a drumstick and you kind of start thinking about it as like kind of a magic wand and what would that look like? Uh, you know, that was kind of just just the uh, the seed in my mind that was like, yeah, I think that would be cool. There's not enough songs. You know, there's not enough uh, literature that features, you know, drummers. Uh, <laughs> and, and, and again, if we were in like a high fantasy world, you know, this would kind of be there their weapon or their wand you know <laughs> so we are looking at drumsticks of doom issue two and one issue two of the heavy metal saga is moshing towards you currently at a goal of 4086 of 4000 congratulations on hitting your funding with 176 backers and 56 hours left to go let me go ahead and put this link in the chat if you guys are watching please feel free to check this out with us and back it is brand new comic book day and treat yourself to an awesome book but if you can't back, we get that. Just share it on Facebook and Twitter. Word of mouth is 100% free. And you're going to have a friend who is going to love this story. So, all right. And Project We Love, too. Congratulations on that, too. Is your first time getting that, or have you gotten that before? Uh, I think Drop 6 to Doom 1 was my second time. Bulletproof Chicken, uh, about 10 years ago, was my first. Uh, they <laughs> seem go. to like my kind of action comedy books. <laughs> I was, dude, Project We Love is like a covenant thing. So the fact that you've gotten it three times already, I mean, you're putting out fire, man. Yeah, I can't complain. Uh, again, we've done well. You know, I always kind of set the budget on the Kickstarter, you know, not to be, you know, sob story or anything, but I always kind of set it lower to make sure that we get there because, you know, Kickstarter is fund or fail. So, you know, if people, you know, want to back share, like you said, I would really appreciate it. The real goal is probably closer to 5,000 uh, to make sure I get my artist paid and everything like that. 
I'm in an okay position. We'll figure it out afterwards. I'm glad we're just funded. We got the minimum funding we need to get these books out there, but I'm, I'm very excited. This was a little bit of a, of a grind, you know, first campaign we funded in six days. Uh, and this time it's been a, a little bit of a hard sell getting people back. We still have about 50% of the backers from the first issue didn't come back for second issue yet. So hopefully we can uh, we can sell them down. The so road what do you think causes that? Do you think it was like the the first issue that drew them in, or like I mean, because you've ran a couple Kickstarters uh, at this point, like what do you think causes that sort of conversion? Well, they could be waiting. They could be saying, "Hey, you know what? This is going to come out. Uh, I'll get issue three and four, two, three, and four together someday." It could be um, they just wanted to support issue one. They just wanted to see it. You know, mm -hmm. some people do that. They like your project. You know, financial times are hard. Could be you know what I backed it earlier this year i'm not able to you know there's a lot of reasons yeah, for that yeah. um but yeah the, a lot of that you can't control i'm glad we got we have a ton of new backers this time at least 25 people also bought issue one i think so that's great yeah you know when i first started writing comics i was always like if i could just get 100 people to read the stuff that i make with other people that'd be excellent and now to see you know most of our kickstarters get 150 200 or more it's a really good feeling that kind of gives you a solid foundation to know that you you know you have an audience that wants books like these and and and, and that's that i can't complain you are making some of the coolest things I, i've read magic to gathering simpsons <laughs> uh heavy metal like this is like me like i love it i it, like it has to be so awesome being able to like create this world and just like just have fun with it oh for sure uh, you know, they say write what you know, so I'm like, all right, I like The Simpsons and do that. I like Magic Gathering. <laughs> I like heavy metal. You know, I am a social worker, so I have a comic about being, <laughs> you know, a social the wallet person, doesn't so. like Magic the Gathering, but yeah. we do. We do. <laughs> no, I was just talking to somebody about that today. No, it, it, the wallet does not. <laughs> <laughs> so just but a yeah. quick recap. Oh, oh, go ahead. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Oh no, I was just gonna say, yeah. I mean, it's awesome. You know, uh, I, I you want to be having fun again. This is not my full time gig, so I want to sit down. I don't want to. I don't want to create books that I'm not that interested in. I want mm -hmm. things that I'm excited about. So all the books I think I've, I've been putting out and, and the people I've worked with have been amazing and great collaborators. Uh, so I'm very, I'm very fortunate with where we're at after two years of, uh, of this, this endeavor. That is awesome. And uh, just to give you guys a real quick recap. When Black Sabbath, not the Beatles, became the world's most famous band, the universe was changed musically and otherwise. Lost arts such as alchemy was made common. School taught about <laughs> transfiguration. Did, I cannot get that. Will you get that That's for good. me? Chan take transfiguration. <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Sometimes words just, if they have more, more than three syllables, I'm lost. In alternate science, demons were summoned and some stuck around. So I thought that was a really awesome element too. Um, It's not just humans like within this crowd. There are some other like really interesting characters. Yep, and there are prominently featured in uh, issue one are two of our non-human characters. Uh, so how again, you got to read if you want to see how they mm -hmm. play in the world. But again, it, it's this is a little bit more slice of life. I kind of told you how the story started. Um, this is kind of just life goes on, right? It's not like every day, uh, you know, these demons are raining hellfire on these people are torturing them. You know, they came to Earth. We don't know why, how they got here, where where they're going, <clears throat> and, and you know, our main characters just kind of interact with them. Again. They love heavy metal too, so they came where the heavy metal was coming from. And again, when Black Sabbath opened that portal to hell unexpectedly, uh, they they wanted to be in this world where the best music was being made. So, and then here are some a look at some of the interiors. It's a 24 page, uh, 22 stunning black and white story pages plus extra size American size book with full color uh, covers. And I really love the black and white aspect of it too. I think it really adds a lot of like different elements to it uh and for example in the first issue there was a really neat panel where uh one of the characters is looking down at the glass and the way your artist was able to draw that reflection with just using black and white i thought was in it was remarkable i've never seen it like that usually people rely on colors so it's it's really cool to see what he's able to get away with with the lack of it yeah he, i'm so fortunate you know we talked about that we had a, a colorist he had in mind who he's worked with part of it was budget but part of it was once i saw his pages in black and white i mean some things are just meant to and of course you know heavy metal does kind of get that feel to it right mm -hmm. i mean you know maybe down the road we do a colored collection edition a full color collected edition uh the colors look great in color but man there's just something about dan's art uh he asked, also wanted to go back and do like an ink wash and i said no dan i think to let your lines breathe you're amazing <laughs> uh i love it i just i love black and white comics and i just think yeah i'm so and, fortunate uh, to have dan currently sitting at 75 percent done so uh that's likely to be wrapped up uh and you ran a 22-day uh campaign as well what was 
some of your reasoning for running a little bit shorter of one. Almost every campaign I've ran was 30 days, 30, 31 days, something like that. Um, and most of them I found, I think this is my 13th campaign uh, with uh, other crowd funders. And there's a lot of, in the middle, there's a lot of dead days uh, mm -hmm. and it kind of drags out. Uh, and I kind of wanted this to, you know, move through the process so I can get on, you know, to creating the book. And also I understood we had a good foundation. So I knew, you know, if I could get, you know, a hundred or so backers to come back, we'd be fine. Um, and then gather some new ones along the way. So part of that was the success of issue one. I don't need just the crowdfunding dollars to make the book happen. I know that, you know, Dan and I have had some good success selling the book at conventions and in stores and online. And so I know that the that I'll I'll be able to um, recoup the cost. So I, I didn't need as long of a campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, whoever wants to join in, I do it, extremely appreciate it. It helps, you know, get those costs covered on the front end. Uh, I don't want to downplay that, but you know, the reasoning for a long campaign, you know, is to get the word out. But we had such a good success with the first one. I feel like you know we've got a core audience already. We didn't need to linger for those middle weeks that that really kind of stress you out a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, I was gonna say uh, on the other end of that, it seems like it gives you. You know, a couple of days to kind of just breathe a little bit. It's like uh, nine times out of ten, when I'm talking to someone who's running a Kickstarter, is just there. They're full of stress, full of like clicking the update and like. Yeah. Um, that just seems like it has such a big mental like wear and tear on you. And so, some of that's on us, right? As you do them more, you, you get used to that. But each campaign, it's hard. You get a lot of messages. You have updates you need to make. You know, um, there, there's a lot to it. So it, mm -hmm. it really, if you only have a few hours a week to do to do your your creative stuff. And you're spending four months of the year really focusing on these Kickstarters. You gotta, you gotta try to squeeze them out. So, like, even just like lettering pages, um, getting the next script ready for Dan, because now we've had success. Now I want to him to roll into the next one in the next month or so. <clears throat> um, all that takes time, right? So you, you, you have to balance it somewhere. So cutting a few days off a Kickstarter seemed like an okay way, so I can get back to creation and fulfilling the books. Again, by the end of the campaign, or close to it. Uh, Dan will be wrapping this up, so we'll be going to print pretty soon. Um, and so, you know, that's part of it too. I got to get ready now to ship another campaign. Mm -hmm. So, don't why why have it linger? Uh, jump in the pit right away. Yeah, and we'll get yeah. the book to you. <laughs> so, real quick, uh, do you have like I know sometimes Kickstarters will have the images of the tiers down below. Do you have that as well, or is everything on the side uh, for us to scroll through? Um, I do have it down below. I I kind of kept it to um, you know, the main items. Like some of the books aren't aren't pictured but are mentioned in the in the uh in the side i didn't have the physical metal cover of the maria mm -hmm. wolf amazing cover i didn't have that so i kind of put the cover but yeah as you scroll down there's more uh there's all more right stuff. so let's go through the tiers and then we'll go back up and cover the band uh to make sure we're giving credit where credit is due so right here is a look at some of the the rewards so you can get uh not only just issue two but issue one as well and yep, then we i love these of the variant covers for kayla and smith those are going super fast we did a very limited print run for issue one, so if you want to get those, this might be the last campaign they're available. I love this, uh, the drumsticks and the, and the guitar picks too. Like, that is so awesome. Uh, I had the opportunity, I think uh, I got the sticker with the first issue run, and I love the little, the death metal logo. Like, I, you guys are like really embracing like the metal side <laughs> of things. And that was my buddy, Dave Jordan, who's huge into metal, also plays in bands. And I was trying to <laughs> think of a way to get him involved. And I was like, oh, can you do me like a doom metal logo? He's like, I got you. So he did that up for me and it's it's perfect. Because <laughs> that is an in-joke in a lot of the heavy metal community, those unreadable logos, you know, mm -hmm. are funny to us. I love the <laughs> memes. It's like a, a pile of sticks and it's like the new metal <laughs> yeah. band name. Yeah, exactly. So here's a look at the uh, the metal cover as well. And this is a beautiful cover. I love this so much. This was, was one I picked out too. Yeah, and I, I, I always kind of go back and forth about the... Um, the tchotchkes and the little things that we add to these books because some of them they, like especially a metal cover adds costs so you end up paying and you don't know if people are going to want them I, even variant covers like you'll see other campaigns where they have like 17 variant covers which is fine mm -hmm. you, you do your campaign your way i just i don't know i feel disingenuous sometimes doing too much of that but i saw a, a brian polito's book uh lady death at a convention i saw a metal cover and i picked it up and I was like, I must do one of these. It doesn't get much more metal because than that. <laughs> it's metal, right? Yeah, that yeah. makes sense, right? It's metal. So why not? So that's, you know, that's part of my reasoning. And of course, her cover with Mike Spicer colors is insane. And it's going to look insane in metal. So I, 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 
I always keep at least one of all these little things, the keychains and everything. So it's mm-hmm. as much for myself as it is for other people. <laughs> I, I kind of want that. So I'm like, yeah, might as well offer it to other people. <laughs> so it looks like you can get the book digitally for three bucks, six dollars mm-hmm. for a physical print of the book. At seven, you're going to get issues one and two both digitally. I think that's such an awesome price because uh, that's 24 pages plus the 32 giant size issue one as well. So that re- remarkable reading for just seven bucks. At eleven, you're gonna get the John Comics bundle. So give us a little bit about this digital bundle. So this is kind of uh, the highlights. A lot of the books that I have done over the year um, that I was, you know, the the, the main writer of. You know, I, I've been part of other anthologies and things like that, which I didn't include because you know the company's not around anymore. But the books that I'm the creator, par- co-creator of, Bulletproof Chicken, Hellbillies. Caper bet with my buddy Harry Moyer. I have a lot of books that I'm still proud of. I still have digital, of course, and I do have some physical copies. So there is a physical tier as well. I always still want to offer those. Those, the, you know, some people shy away from things they did early in their career. I'm very proud of these books. I, I still, you know, want to mm-hmm. get them out there. They're they're taking up closet space. My wife reminds me all the time, so <laughs> I also need to get rid of them. Uh, so of course, you know, I want to offer, you know, kind of my library of books is is nice to have in these campaigns, and those those do really well. So those are very helpful for the campaign, and that's a lot of that is is previous crowdfunders that were paid for. So that's you know really good for an independent creator yeah. like me. It, 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 it it's if a good thing to offer to people but it also helps fund these other books i appreciate you going in depth with that too because we do have new people that watch that are getting ready to start kickstarters all the time so uh a lot some of these questions that i ask are ones that are you know are meant to give you room uh for that reason so i appreciate that so much uh, you're probably helping tons of people out there kind of like because that's something i wouldn't think about too is using stuff from other kickstarters as as incentives or add-ons to, to help fund new ones and like how it just keeps going into one goes into the another and if you know, it's, it just seems like such an awesome cycle to like start doing. Yeah, and I think that was the hard part, honestly, coming back. You kind of, it is momentum. Part of it is building off of the last Kickstarter, the last book. And when you, when you take, I took a couple years away, uh, that, that it was kind of hard saying, well, do I still have momentum? Are people going to care? Are they going to want these dusty old books that are now, you know, a decade old? Uh, <laughs> so the, that is always a hard thing. Again, and a lot of people say, oh, I don't want to do this book I did 10 years ago because I don't. It's not my best work and that's okay you know be honest with yourself but uh, also put it out there and let the people decide too yeah yeah so at 12 or more uh 12 bucks or more you're gonna get the the book variant print at 14 or more you're gonna get the uh the book plus issue one print so two bucks for a physical that's that's an awesome price well that's the the standard issue so it was eight and six so that's really just the price of the two books um but with uh you know we did have a bundle deal for early bird backers and we will probably do that in future campaigns if people are okay. wondering uh we, you know we try to get funded in that first week uh but still i think that's a good price I, i've seen a lot of other indie books of less pages that that go for more so we i really do struggle with that price point mm-hmm. you know how what's a fair price for for people's dollars because you, you know people work hard for their money i, I don't want to just say here's a 10 page book yeah and it's, and it's hard not to like want to value value yourself at a good price too right like you want to make sure people are getting the biggest bangs for their buck um yeah. speaking of that it looks like the 15 or more all 2022 books is, is a good bang for your buck you save uh two dollars getting this tier uh so these are going to be all the books that you came out with this year yep and you can get that in print and then as we scroll down you'll see um you can get it in print and digital but yes, in the last year, again, I said we've done six books. Uh, one came out like at the tail end of 2021. Mm-hmm. So we're kind of including it here. So people may have missed it. But we did the second volume of our Magic the Gathering anthology zine, a Simpsons tribute comic, uh, Drum Six of Doom one and two. So yeah, you can get all the books at, you know, save a couple bucks. And then right here is that uh, the, the physical uh, comic bundle, bundle, excuse me, at $21. So you're going to get all those physical books from the digital uh, tier um, a little bit previously, and you're gonna save eight dollars doing so. So uh, that's awesome. At 29, you're gonna get all the 22,000 uh, or the 20, 2022, excuse me, prints. Um, 45 or more is uh, that early bird. So that's gonna be all the PTC books uh, print. So this is uh, still going, or is this uh, not going? You got longer? one tier left. We we did we did that as a limited kind of early bird. Only mm-hmm. offer two. Only one is there. So if anybody wants to jump on that, you you save about eight dollars. You get all of our books that we've done in the last two years. Um, so a, a pretty awesome collection of books at, at a good price. And uh, at 48, we get the book and the extra metal print. 49 or more, so a dollar more, you're gonna get all the PTC books printed. 
Hmm? At 50, we got uh, the book and all the variant prints. 75 or more is the sellout advertising tier. So what's this ad space going to look like? Do you have any idea like where yeah, so in the book? In the front of the book, this was a banner ad at the bottom of the credits page. So we're trying to, you know, do some different things to bring in different funding, help with those printing costs, keep the cost down. So we're able to do like a banner ad at the bottom. It looks okay. Uh, so yeah, that's still available. Or there is a little bit down. We did a, a full back page ad, full color provided by the backer. So if anybody's looking for some advertising, again, we had 269 backers of the first book. We already have 176 here. We, a lot we of eyes. Plan, we plan to sell, you know, all 500 that we've printed uh, and continue to sell the digital one as well online into the future. So it, I think it's a good way. We're of course gonna shout you out and through the mm -hmm. Kickstarter on our social media. So the, the advertising, it, it does help. And then that's it. So let's take a look at some of these original art as well. So oh, these are sold out too. C dude, congratulations, man. Th that's awesome. <laughs> well, that's a little bit disingenuous. Those are the pages that sold for the first campaign. Those are the mm. only ones you can't get. Okay. Uh, so sorry about that, everybody. Maybe I should have put it different. I should have put the pages that were, <laughs> but there's, there's like 30 pages that didn't sell yet. So that would have been a huge graphic. But yes, those are the pages we sold out. So if you want the best of the rest, you got to get in there now and, and you get to pick your page. And then we also have uh, Get Drawn in the Book. So uh, Limit 3, uh, how much is uh, this tier going to be? So that's actually sold out, unfortunately. We had people jump on that early. So next time we will be offering that <laughs> likely again. We did it one in the other book too. Uh, but yeah, for $150, uh, Dan will draw you in the, in the, in the book. Uh, but yeah, those did go early. So. And then real quick before, it looks like Jam Session. Is this, this going to be a D&D &D thing? So this was a crossover with a buddy of mine, Travis Gibb, and his amazing team are making a book called granite state punk punk metal why not we made a guitar pick together um and uh if i had it if i was smarter i'd have it ready here but <laughs> we made a guitar pick i've already ordered it because i'm so confident that anybody who backs our book is going to back his book and we did a guitar pick for the first thing i know drumsticks of doom i should be doing drumsticks but drumsticks are really hard to ship so i haven't gotten on that yet but for now we have this exclusive pick if you back either both of the books Add a physical tier, any tier, in in the package you get from Part Time Comics with your book, you'll get this pick. It's the only place you can get it. So That's Travis so cool, is, Travis runs Orange Cone Productions. He's an amazing creator. He's a champion for the indie community. And this was kind of something I wanted to do. Just to, he, you know, he kind of approached me. Hey, let's you know do a crossover, and and that seemed like a cool you know idea again because punk and metal. You know, why not a guitar pick? No, absolutely. So real quick, before we wrap things up, let's go ahead and give a shout out to the the band, you know, the, the creative team as well. So I think that's a little bit up here. Yep, right, right here. So that. right here is the yeah. band. So um, outside of you and, and Dan, who else was involved in this project? Well, a lot of it, indie comics, it, you know, can be one person, can be, you know, 20 people. It can be as many as you want. Some people write, draw, letter their own books. Our, our team is pretty lean. The main team going forward is Dan and I. But, you know, sometimes you got a different song. You need to bring in a saxophone player. You need to bring in extra percussion. <laughs> mm -hmm. So, you know, we'd like to bring in other people, particularly for covers. We talked about Kelly Williams and we talked about Manifesto. They're amazing covers. There are two cover artists for this book. They did amazing. Dan is doing the bulk of the main story. There is a little bit of a flashback -y dream sequence, which I brought in Australian artist Ryan Vela, who is amazing. Uh, so he did some pages for us too. Uh, I don't, there's a lot of spoilers in those pages. So you only get a one little glimpse of it here in the Kickstarter. So you have to read Dan, it, Ryan is an, another amazing black and white uh, artist. And when I saw his art, I was like, oh, you have to do this, this tribute to Manowar type of idea that I have. Uh, and, and he was like, yes, of course I want to do that. <laughs> and he also plays in a band too. So I was like, oh, perfect. <laughs> All right. Let's so yeah, that's ahead. our our team is lean and mean, but uh, it's mostly Dan and I doing most of the work. I letter my own pages. Part of that's out of uh, being a control freak, so I can edit it right to the last second when I send it to print if I don't like the dialogue or how it looks. Mm -hmm. uh, so yeah, we no colorist yet, so it's just hey, it really helps. Dan and I. It helps knowing that though, right? Like that's one, you know, it being a control freak, you know that you know that satisfies that part of it, but you you also save cost because you're the letterer. Uh, yeah. and, you, you know, I think, and it's also a nice skill set to have too, because that just is another thing you add to, you know, your bucket list of abilities. Absolutely. And I've been able to work with other, um, with other creators on books because of that. And, and yeah, it, it is a really good skill. It's definitely something I recommend all your writers learn, get you a cheap, 
in my case it was pirated version of photoshop <laughs> uh adobe illustrator um and 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 teach yourself to letter it's 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 a great skill and you'll have more empathy for other people who letter your work uh and realize how much work goes into it maybe uh some of those scripts end up being a little less wordy wordier mm -hmm. after you uh, yep. ha had to write them out yeah <laughs> exactly when you're so, like yeah <laughs> so uh after going through the kickstarter for anyone who might be on the fence with you know what 55 56 hours left to go what would you like to say to them directly to help push them over that barrier all I can say to you is it's heavy metal or no metal at all, as uh, our uh, warriors of metal, Man of War, would say. Uh, if you like heavy metal, you like fun, uh, I think you'll like this book. Uh, I think Dan's art alone, and of course Ryan with his guest appearance in this one, that alone is a selling point to me. But I, I hope that I, I, I can rise to the occasion and have given you a fun and interesting story. I, I think uh, it's, I try to make realistic you know, characters again, even though it's a sensational world that we've created, again, I, mm -hmm. I, I try to keep it grounded. It does feel like, you know, again, these are just people getting ready for a gig and uh, they also have to battle with werewolves and cults and things like that so they can get there. So uh, if that doesn't sell you on it, if heavy metal is not for you, I still think you're going to get a cool fantasy action, uh, uh, humorous it, it adventure story. No, absolutely. So with that being said, we came to my favorite part of the show and you, you've been on before, so you know the drill. With that, you know, with, with everything aside, um, as much as this is a podcast where we really focus on you and your book and everything in between, I also love asking a little bit of a question for anyone who might be new or out there, even just experienced but struggling. Um, so with that being said, for anyone who might be out there and they're thinking about running a Kickstarter, since you have a decent amount of experience doing that, what would be some of the uh, do's and don'ts for uh, running a campaign, would you say? Well, first off, I love helping, you know, 12 years ago, so many people helped me and continue to help me. Mm -hmm. uh, part of one of the biggest joys in being a comic creator has been helping people see their work in print and just seeing how excited they are when you hand them the book and say, that, you know, these are your copies or they email you afterwards. Oh, I got it in the mail. It looks great. <laughs> I still love that. That's part of why mm -hmm. I did the two anthologies this year, because I, I just I just love that feeling of, of, of what I had when I first saw my, my work in, in print in, in a comic. Um, so I'm, I'm always happy to talk about this. I think last time I was on your show, I mentioned, you know, keep it short. I think is 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 a good thing for the the, the first uh, thing that you write. And I think that's true for the first Kickstarter that you do, too. I would not have launched Drumsticks of Doom 10 years ago. This is a longer story. I feel like Dan and I have enough experience to do that uh, mm -hmm. in the Kickstarter realm, in, in comic creation in general. I wouldn't do that for your first Kickstarter. I would do a one shot, an anthology, something that you can give someone a, a total story and then build off of that. Now, if you have a, another one um, that, that's in the same universe, great. But I, I would tell the whole story in that issue. I wouldn't launch your 30 issue uh, series. I wouldn't launch, launch your, <laughs> even your 12 issue series. I've ha I have people who've done that and they, 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 they do it. But by and large, I feel like a lot of the indie series don't see the end because of that. Or the issues come out years apart and you lose a lot of that momentum. Um, do it, do it. If it's your first one or even your second one, keep it short. If it's one or two issues, that's great. If it's a one shot, even better. Uh, if it's an anthology, that's the best. Get some other people in the story. All of your 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 family, your friends, your 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 fans will come together and and support the book. That's an, a great way too. So so do something a little bit shorter with your first one. No, absolutely. Thank you so much for that piece of advice. I think you know aiming for something that's achievable, that's not too big to bite off. Because uh, a big part of this is like keeping your mental health, health in check. And, you know, if you're if you're overdoing it, it's so easy to get burnt out and lose track of what's going on. And, uh, you know, you just want to make sure everything is set up to to in, ensure, uh, you know, success with this. Uh, run, making a comic's hard enough, promoting it and getting people to buy it, it's a whole other battle. Absolutely. And, you know, of course, comics don't only come down to the finance, but that is a big part of it, right? Because printing costs are high, shipping costs are high, it, especially for me with part-time comics. I want... if. I, I'm the if I'm the publisher, then I want to pay the contributors who are who are um, you know involved. So that's a huge part of it too, right? You don't you want to work with artists, keep them working if they're doing it on the side or, or whatever. Or like I said in Dan's case, he does it full time. So of course I want to pay him his page rate. I'm mm -hmm. not going to be like do this for free. Um, so of course finance is a huge part of it. But you're right, the burnout part of it is is too. Like you know you get to issue three, like I did with my first story, where I was like 30, 40 pages into it, and I realized. This is too much. Like we'll never get to the end of this. And Bob and I were were able to find a way to wrap it up. But um, you know that was a lesson for me. Like don't 
don't start with like kind of a meandering wide story uh because time is precious too and again a lot yeah. of us are doing this on the side and uh, you will stress yourself out you will burn yourself out now i'm not saying don't go for it don't shoot high you know if you, you of course you want to but but find that fine line talk to other people and then find what works again you could tell a longer story but tell it in shorter chunks so that you know you're going to get through it uh in a reasonable amount of time no absolutely i think you know, I think that is an awesome piece of advice and one that if you if you take it and you take it seriously is going to help you along any path that you choose. John, thank you so much for that piece of advice for coming on, breaking down issue two and one with us and everything in between. We have to get ready for the pit. You guys know what it is. It's new comic book day. Be sure to check out that Kickstarter link. And if you can't back, just share it. You know, Facebook, Twitter, word of mouth is 100 percent free. Hope you all have an awesome day. But most importantly, guys, keep it geekly.